So this is my attempt at making a very short video on Limicons. Let's see how it goes. <clears throat> what we have below are four example equations, and we're going to look at this ratio of A to B. Now these equations are of the format R equals A plus B cosine theta. And <clears throat> let's get some graphs drawn first, and then we'll compare these ratios of the absolute value of A over B. And we'll see if they sort of point us in any particular direction. Uh, and instead of, let's see, for graphing purposes, I'm going to see if I can get desmos.com over here as a split screen. And sometimes this thing does not play super, well, let's go right down the middle for now, play super nice. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> so our first graph, r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. And I have that drawn in red at the right for you. And notice it goes all the way to the right to, to 5. And the leftmost part of that graph goes to negative 1. So as best you can, on your notes, 1, 2, 3, 2, that's 2, 3, 4, 5. I've been at it for a while tonight making videos. Uh, we're going three up and three down on the vertical axis. One, two, three, one, two, three. And see what you can do about by drawing that shape. I'll be honest with you. I tried like five times earlier. I don't know if it's the angle that my iPad is at with the direction that I'm sitting or maybe my wrist is malfunctioning or so, I don't know what's going on. But my drawing was a train wreck. So these are the sort of key points that you need to have on your graph and realize that <clears throat> after this curve sort of comes out and crosses the vertical axis, it does need to go higher than that point before it starts coming down. All right, I mean, if I'll draw you one so you can have a good laugh and see, it's like it just, it turns the corner too fast. And I'm trying to get it to not just go immediately straight down and I just can't get it around fast enough because it's supposed to be crossing at negative three and then it's supposed to come down a bit before it comes up and that doesn't look anything like the actual graph, right? That's not helpful. See what you can do and maybe you'll give yourself a good laugh at your own graphing abilities. I can't even look at it, I've got to erase it. Now you can see why I had all these equations typed in to Desmos in advance. All right, so I've got to have because we need to talk about it later. I've got to have some kind of a version of this graph over here. It looks like a heart. Terrible. Should have kept the first one. All right, what's our next equation? We've got 1 minus 3 cosine theta. All right, so over here in Desmos, let me turn off that one, turn on this one, and slide that over. All right, so this thing has the bubble on the inside of it, just like the graph that we saw in the pre previous segment video, where we were talking about <clears throat> symmetry. And let's see, we're going to negative two and negative four on that graph. Negative, hello. Negative one, two, three, four. We've got uh, a little inner loop. I'm not gonna be too crazy about this. Now look, the outer loop, just like that other graph that we saw uh, in the previous segment, see how it protrudes into the first and fourth quadrants a little bit. So on our graph, it does need to come in there a little bit into the first quadrant before it comes around here. And then when once you make your way back, make sure that it does sneak into that fourth quadrant a little and come back in. Wow. I'm in the correct field. Math, yes. Art, no. I couldn't draw my way out of a wet paper bag. It's embarrassing. My father was an architect and an amazing artist, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned it in this video series, but this painting that's over my shoulder, actually all of those, well, there are three, but you can only see two of them. Those were all done by my dad, and they're, I mean, unbelievably detailed and 
and it's crazy. And he did the one that's on, I don't know, your left, I guess, the one that's closer to my head. He did that, like, in a weekend. He saw it in a magazine. It's some famous painting, and he was like, I bet I could do that. I'll just use these pastels, and I'll knock this out. And me, I can't, like, draw a pair of concentric, they're not concentric circles, but, you know. Anyway, miss you, Dad. Uh, let's look at the next equation and draw another embarrassing graph there, please. This looks a lot like a circle, and it's pretty close. I think it's it's actually like a little bit pressed in on the left-hand side. It's really hard to tell, obviously. But you can notice that the majority of it, more than half of it, is to the right of the pole, whereas the previous graphs previous graph was heavy to the left, the first graph was heavy to the right, and that might have something to do with the fact that this is positive, this is negative, this one's positive. All right, so let's see, we're going to negative two, negative one, two, positive one, two, three, four. On the vertical axis, we're going up one, two, three, down one, two, three, and then it looks a little bit like a circle, but it's gonna go sort of high up here and a little low down here. Let's see if we can get it to pass through those points at all. Yeah, sad, sad, sad graph. And the last one, one minus cosine. Oh, that's not right. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. That's one of the ones that got moved around. No, now we're highlighting. We don't want to do that. How do I move it up there? There we go. I want it right here. And I want to turn it on. There we go. Alright, square it up. Come on now. Get it together. <clears throat> this one looks more like a heart or a butt or something. Or a peach. How about a peach? That's good. It's a sideways peach. On the vertical axis, we're going up one and down one. In the negative horizontal direction, we're going to the left two and we're drawing right out of the pole. So we're coming into the first quadrant a little bit before we get out here and come back, a little wobble there and into the fourth quadrant a little bit. That was the best of the bad right there, okay? Now let's talk about these ratios. Here we've got the absolute value. Let's just, you stay there, slide that over. Can we? All right, let's talk about ratios. So we've got the absolute value of A over B is the absolute value of three over two. That's supposed to be an absolute value. That's equal to three over two. Okay, and then down here we've got the absolute value of 1 over negative 3, which equals 1 third. Here we've got the absolute value of 3 over 1, which is equal to 3. And down here the absolute value of 1 over negative 1, which equals 1. Alright, so let's see if we can do any kind of pattern recognition here. A little tough because you can't really establish a pattern without multiple instances of the same thing, but see if you can catch my drift. In the first example, this ratio right here is larger than one. It's between one and two. It's it's one and a half really. And the graph is a graph that sort of has a dimple on the left hand side, but the dimple doesn't press all the way into the pole. All right. In the net in graph number two, where the ratio is equal to one third, our graph has the full loop on the inside of it. So that's with a ratio that is between zero and one, one third. The next one almost looked like a circle and it has a ratio that's larger than two. And finally, we've got the peach. 
The dimple on the right hand side this time presses all the way in to where it touches the pole, but it doesn't go so far as to have a bubble on the inside of it like in our second graph. And that's with a ratio equal to one. And we're being asked at the bottom here to now go down and fill in the summary page. So let me skip down there. And here on the summary page, we see, now unfortunately these are not in the same order. What did we have? We had the, I think the peach was last, and that's where the absolute value of A over B I think that's the one where it was equal to one. Equals one. We'll change it back if we have to. <clears throat> the the one with the circle, I believe, ugh, I just can't remember. Oh, we can just, we'll use these graphs over here to the right. Okay, that one had a ratio of one, that was with the, that was the peach, okay, good. And then this one, I'm clicking on it with the wrong cursor. This one that looked like a circle had a ratio of three, so that's where the absolute value of A over B is greater than two. And then the next one, the rightmost one, this one here, which graph was that? Ah, there it is. All right, so that had the ratio that ended up being three halves. So that's a ratio uh, between one and two. Absolute value, A over B is less than two, but it's also greater than one. Very good, which means that our last one, the one that actually has the circle pressing into it, had the ratio that was between zero and one, which we don't actually have to say that because of the absolute value. It certainly can't be negative but the absolute value of A over B here is going to be less than one. All right, so that is the summary page, and that is the end of our conversation about, where are they, limicons. And if you would like to join me for the next segment in this video, which is about rose curves, I would like it very much if you would join me and to do that, you can just click on this box that is right here below me, and that'll take you straight to it. See you over there.